Shabbat Shalom. This is Rabbi Maurice Sklar, and I want to welcome welcome you tonight to uh, our Beit Rafa Shabbat service. And um, Hallelujah! I believe that uh, tonight's going to be really, really wonderful. I had a a ter just an awesome time uh, yesterday with uh, Pastor Benny Hinn and. We had a one of the greatest worship time experiences I can remember in a long time. It was just wonderful. I hope you were able to tune in and and uh, listen to that. Otherwise, I think you can watch it. Uh, there's a link on my on the Facebook page there. So we had a a um, virtual uh, healing uh, he miracle, a healing and uh, worship service uh, down in. Uh, uh, Southern California, and so we drove all day, and we were there, and oh, what a fabulous experience. I, I'm i just charged down to my toes. It just feeds me so much, and what a great man of God Pastor Benny Hinn is. I I just think, think the the world and heaven of him is what a, what a worshiper, what a fine, uh, just integrity, everything. It was just beautiful. Let me say hello to some of you tuning in tonight. And um, we're going to be, uh, I have a, uh, want to talk to about tonight's or to this week's parasha and the, the uh, readings that the Jews all over the world, uh, we read from the Torah uh, weekly in a uh, uh, it's set up so that we cycle around the uh, the first five books of Moses every at uh, once a year and so we're up to the end of the book of numbers so I want to talk to you some about that and my uh, dear friend uh, Lenny Parada has a wonderful commentary and I it's just so good I couldn't improve on it so I said, well, I'm going to, I'm going, he was with us here in the healing rooms and still part of the family, but he's a pastor, uh, that, uh, a vineyard pastor for many years. And he's now living up in Northern California, uh, Lenny and Linda Parada, a great lover of Israel and, uh, tremendous, uh, tremendous insight teacher of, of, the Word of God from a Jewish perspective. And so anyway, I'm going to read some of that. So let me say hello to, and shalom, Shabbat shalom to Lenora Freudenberg. You are, you're the number one uh, spot tonight. You jumped right on. So I just, I try to at least, you know, say hello to, to uh, the, those of you that jump on like that, uh, you know, you're, you must be hungry. And I hope, like I said, let me know if you, uh, if you watched that, if you didn't, if you didn't watch the, uh, the healing service yesterday afternoon. Oh, just wonderful worship with, I think the best of the best, uh, Pastor Jim Sonero and Bruce Hughes and I, and, uh, well, they're to play with. They are just, I mean, there's, they're just amazing, and all those, a lot of those songs that, gosh, some of them, I, I don't know, a few of them I didn't even recognize, a couple of them I didn't recognize, so we were playing the whole time, went about three hours or so, and, oh, it's fabulous. So, hello to Joanne, Shabbat Shalom, Joanne Peace, and Doris Willett, bless you, honey, glad you're here, and Aniki Vanderwettering. So glad you're with us too, and and hello, Joanne and John Milky, our our victorious now non-smoking dear one, coming on the Beit Rafa. What is Beit Rafa? Beit Rafa means house of healing or place of healing, and I believe this is a place of healing. It's a place of refuge. Uh, it's a, a a special covering, you know, the on on the uh, Shabbat and and the holidays, uh, 
rabbis traditionally wear uh, the talit or the uh, prayer shawl. And it's also <clears throat> something that the Apostle Paul mentioned when he was, he talked about making tents. Well, he wasn't talking about, you know, going camping, that kind of tents. He was talking about this as being a tabernacle or a tent that, and so I very likely, I, he was a, he made talits to help support him. And um, uh, so this is a, a very sacred, one time I'll have to share with you, I think our dogs are welcome, welcoming somebody to the door as they do. We have two doggies and they're barking, so they'll, they'll stop in a little bit. We have Coco, the dowager lady, <laughs> old lady now, and we have Benji, uh, who's a rat terrier, and he makes a lot of noise and scares all the all the demons away, I think. Anyway, so that's what's, I'm at home here in my office, so I'm upstairs. So anyway, let me say hello to Helen Pappas Knaisley Bonk. Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, dear. And so glad you're with us. And Kathy Childers, Kathy Holly Childers. Bless you. I was really impressed the way uh, Pastor Benny just really, he ministered, powerfully to uh he had a record amount of zoom zoom people zoom 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 from all over the world in fact they had to evidently uh uh pastor jim was telling me that he, they had to set up uh, uh a special uh it was a record for the zoom technology they had to add and they tried i think they added a thousand or two thousand more and then I don't know, it's just an enormous uh, undertaking. A little late getting started, but we, but I'm just amazed at the technology and, and, and how Pastor was able to, Pastor Benny was able to uh, minister to uh, a lady in Serbia. I mean, you should watch it. It's just, and it felt like a river of healing just, just exploded out of, out of us all. And uh, wow. I forgot how good it was. It would have been, been a year year or two since we've... And so, and and I want to tell you too that uh, I will be returning, Lord willing, in two weeks. Uh, we'll be going back down and, and he's planning it. This was his second one. So every two weeks we're planning on having, uh, uh, you know, the, the four of us, I, I, you know, with, uh, uh, and I, you know, just... Like I said, it blessed it. It's a blessing. So if you didn't watch it, if you can take a little time and at least watch some of it and worship. He just sang and worshipped, and we all those old beautiful uh, songs and some of the hymns and the, and I think we need I think we need to get some of that music back. I don't think we should just forget about it. It it there was a beautiful flow of. A purity and <clears throat> melody and song and that came out of the the charismatic uh, and uh, you know Jesus movement and and I think Pastor Benny just gets the he's got the I mean he just got the best of the best of these songs and I learned many of them we've been together twenty eight almost thirty years now so it's been quite an adventure. I don't know why I can't stop talking about it. I was just, I was so blessed. I mean, it was my honor. And, you know, uh, Pastor Benny said, we, we, we talked and we were talking and he said, he said, so, um, uh, so if I ask you to come back, will you come? I said, I'll never say no to you, Pastor Benny. And he, he liked that. But it's true. I'll, I'm, I have a covenant with that man of God and I will keep it, bless God. Hallelujah. What a, what an honor. What an honor. So, uh, oh, you know what? I, I had some music on here. I want to put that on. I don't know. What, oh, that's my Songs of Zion CD. So, let's put that on softly here. Praise the Lord. 
Shalom to Christine Brown. Welcome. And Jody Judkins, I was praying for you, Jody, for your, you had two things. You had a tooth extraction, I believe you said, and you had, um, and you've had some real physical battles with your back and uh, s some other areas. I'm standing with you. I believe God is, was with you. So I want to hear, uh, I want to hear how it, uh, how it went. You're doing okay. And pray, uh, dear ones, let's just agree for her that she's pain free and she's going to walk pain free and her back is destined to straighten out. She's, she's had a lot of battles with scoliosis and other, uh, oh, I mean, back pain is awful. And Father, I just lift her up to you right now and I ask, Lord, that you would touch her, give her, give her total restoration. Hallelujah. So I love you, Jody, and glad you're here. And your husband as well, Rob, I believe is his name. Yes, bless you. And Sharon Fitzgerald Hubbard. Good evening. And John Milkey. Hey, praise the Lord. Shalom, Christine writes. Shalom, Maurice. And Sean Powell. Bless you, honey. Glad you're with us. And it was incredibly, Helen writes. I guess you're talking about yesterday. It was a, it, it was just a grand slam home run. I mean, from the time we started, I mean, that's, you know, golden Benny, golden. It was just, oh, you have to watch it. It is, we watched it again on the way home, Devora. She said, I got my own service. And she's sitting there and, you know, they, all, all the people were there were, well, there was the, uh, the pastor who's helping the poor, uh, feeding the poor and his wife. They were there and Devora and, the, and then just the, the TV people. And Jeff Pittman was there, just a few, few of us. And I said, wow, Devora, you're, you, just get, you just get your own service just for you. I said, well, maybe a few others have shared it. <laughs> Over 100,000 before we finished and then more. So that's, that's amazing. That's like going into a, a, you know, I've never, I don't think I've ever, we've ever, I've not been in a service with Pastor uh, that, that um, with that many people. So it's just an amazing time how we can reach so many people through through this extraordinary uh, way of you know I I never dreamed it you know we could go live all over the world for 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 free basically and well I mean it, it does I tell you where the cost is the cost is what we do in the spirit to prepare so hallelujah we thank God for that anointing we're gonna pray in just a little bit so Hello, Mr. Rob. Good to see you. Rob, Jud Rob Jud Judkins is here and Roger Levitt. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. I'm glad you, you enjoyed that and thank you for your generosity and all of you that are helping us with your giving. You're getting us through. You know, sometimes it's a day at a time, but we're, 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 we're making it through. Praise the Lord. And Jody watched. Did you do, did you do okay? Let me know. Um, I gotta get to where I, I maybe I should do that Zoom thing. I, I don't know if I can talk to you, but or at least we should have some kind of uh, uh, program where we, uh, you know, where we, uh, you know, we can be a little interactive. I have to learn. I, I, I still am marvel just that you can text me. You know. Hallelujah. Yes, Aniki. Thank you and. Oh, hallelujah. Ruth Summers. Ruth Summers is here from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, where I grew up as a, as a child. Yeah, wonderful. Glad you're here, honey, and hallelujah. It was anointed, Christine writes, the music and the miracles. Yes, it was so special. Praise God. And here's someone I don't recognize. I, don't, I think it's your first time. Francine. D'Angelo Jacobs and Shabbat Shalom to you, dear sister. Hallelujah. And Doris says hi from Florida. And yeah, it was kind of a long service, but you know, I learned when I first uh, started with Pastor Benny back in 1992 
Uh, short services are against his religion. That's, I mean, that's just all there is to it. He doesn't know how to, I, I, if we, but we would go five hours at a time and, or more sometimes, a little bit more, you know, and it would be, uh, uh, it would just fly by. It was like, we just weren't there for, it didn't, it didn't even seem like any time passed because you just get swept up in that, that wonderful presence oh i'm addicted in, in a good way to to that wonderful presence of worship there's nothing like it hallelujah i hope y'all were blessed too and julie fernandez hello and good evening rob writes and gillen kazmarak good to see you hallelujah alfred gillen alfred Kazmarek, and I know someone that plays the violin from Oklahoma with the last name Kazmarek. It's not a very common name, so I am I still think you're probably related to him. I'm not quite sure. He's a wonderful uh, believer uh, that I knew during my time I lived there, and I was on the faculty at Oral Roberts University for 13 years. I was a professor of violin and viola, and mainly artists in residence and they let gave me a special uh, Richard uh, Roberts gave uh, gave me a special position so I could travel and and still teach there and I miss them a lot a great school there's no school like it in the whole world hallelujah and uh, Emmanuel Bayusas my the young man Violinist from the Philippines. Hallelujah. Um, yes, uh, he, uh, Emmanuel, he, he, uh, <clears throat> I have it on my, <clears throat> on the page, Facebook page, or you can go to Benny Hinn Ministries page as well. And uh, it's just, a, it was a, a archive, you know, like a, like one of these, you can just click on it. I believe I have it on my page. If I don't, we need to reload it. But Devorah put it on, and hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lenora. I'm glad you enjoyed it. And Scott Scott, I don't... Welcome. I seen double here. Scott Scott. Hello, Maurice. You're from Cambodia. Wow. Cambodia. That's amazing. Oh, wonderful, Sean. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Barb Ellis is here. Shalom to you. And Ron, Randy or Randy Fogelman. Now, that's, I think that's a Jewish name for sure. Fogelman. Maybe I don't, rec I don't recognize your, your come on before, so welcome. And Eleanor Rambo, welcome. And uh, some new people coming on. Wonderful. Don Ferguson. Yes, from South Carolina, if I remember correctly. I haven't seen you in a long time. Good to, good to have you with us, Don. Bless you. And, um, let's see. Karen McCain. Welcome. Good to see you. My ceiling fan is off. Yes. You know why? Because I turned the air conditioner on because it was a little hot today. You, uh, yeah, you don't see, you guys notice all these details. Of course, you spent a lot, we've spent a lot of time together. Yes, that's right. My ceiling fan is off, so uh, you don't see that flickering fire on <laughs> reflection. Someone thought that was a, a sign and wonder. I thought that was funny. Okay, well, you know, God can do it if he wants to. I've seen a few of those which I couldn't explain, like oil pouring out of a Bible, stuff like that. I And, <clears throat> you know, there's been some unusual things that I don't quite understand. And, you know, but that's, that. right now, it's, you see, it's just a reflection on my dictionary there. <laughs> it's a plastic cover. Some of these books are my well, were my father's, my late father's books, and so um, I just want to honor him. So I'm reading. Uh, I've been I've read quite a few of them. I I won't read the myths, the mythology that I'm not interested in, but they look nice. <laughs> and some of these uh, figurines uh, and things were gifts uh, that are special to me. 
including Mr. Snoopy here, who's off tonight because something happened to it. I don't think it was, it was probably not the greatest quality manufacturer, but it lasted for a little while. And then, so it lights up, but it's not lit tonight. I have to check and see if I can do something about that. I'm taking my time today. I hope that's all right with you. I feel so good. I just, you know, there's sometimes you don't even feel like you have a body. You just float. That's what it felt. I just, I always, you know, if there's, there's a period of time in between and then back with pastor again, and I'm like, I forgot how good it was. Oh, it was so good. Oh, praise the Lord. I pray God blesses you today. Just like that, how I'm feeling. I'm just, I feel like I'm floating right now. Just floating. Helen writes here. Oh, Kristen. Oh, sorry. Uh, Kristen Adams. Pastor Benny's smile is the best. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you should watch it. It's, uh, I keep, I don't know, I'm bragging on the Lord because the Lord was, we were just the delivery people. It was the meal that was, so, I mean, it was the feast God gave us. And Helen says, writes, I totally agree. The music now does not do the same. Well, I have to, you know, and I love, I love all God's people. And I understand, but there's, it's very limited. It's been, it, there's very, there's not much melody. There's not much, uh, there's a lot of repetition. Uh, there's some musical things missing. That's why it just doesn't, it doesn't flow like it should because we, you know, there's laws that govern music like there would flying an airplane. Uh, there's certain things that work and certain things that don't work. And so there's a lot of, there's a lot of, uh, there's a, uh, there's a lot of problems that well-meaning young believers are, are writing music and it's from their heart and I understand and bless their hearts but you know it's just the the plane won't fly that's the problem we need to get it aerodynamic and so maybe we'll come back to some of those things that make music work uh, I sure hope so hallelujah hello Emily Schneider Strickland and hallelujah Kristen Adams, my daddy was a pastor, she writes. <clears throat> God rest his soul, amen. He passed away as a pastor for the Navajo Nation, hallelujah. You know, I wanna say something about, uh, right now, about how much God loves every race, tribe, tongue, and kindred. Kindred, He loves us all, he even loves the Jews, isn't that, after all the bad stuff we did, you could read it, but he loves, he he just loves everyone, and there is no. Uh, well, it's a time. That's what I was going to say. This is the time, especially for the African American people, to for them to co go free from bondage and slavery, just like uh, the Jews did when we came out of Egypt. God brought us out, and and he 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 lifted us up out of that uh, that slavery, and this is. A time of destiny and but the enemy wants to 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 inject hatred division uh, and uh, and try to to separate God's people God doesn't look on the outside he really doesn't he's uh, well then why do you wear that you think you're special no I God God asked me to, that's why. He said, especially on Shabbat, on the Sabbath, I want you to honor me. And he asked me to step into this place, office, if you will, of, of rabbi. What is, it's like a pastor, but it's a, it just means teacher. It's not a, a but the reason is because there is an oversight. There is, there, God is raising up a pure, pure leaders, pure, that are, that walk the talk, they do it, you know, and I'm, I'm not perfect, but hallelujah, uh, by God's grace, uh, my conscience is clear, and I'm walking free, and in victory, and, and it's a place of service, it's a, it's like a waiter, you know, uh, that 
brings you your meal. You know, he's serving you, but he'll have a, something on to say, you know, I'm here to serve you. And that's, that's what that is. But we've got to get this hatred and division out. And I just tell people, don't, don't watch too much news because there's, there's a lot of poison in it, a lot of negative and a lot of, I mean, I watch a little bit. Because I, I don't, I want to know what's going on. Did did they blow themselves up yet? You know, I mean, what happened today? Well, I want to know. But you can learn a lot in about ten minutes, especially if you go in times of uh, you know summary. You know, I like the T Tucker Carlson show is good, and some of the others. Uh, Mr. Hannity gets a little caustic sometimes. Uh, the evening Fox. Uh, man but he's still very good tucker's a little little bit more gracious and you know but the main thing is this uh, we we need uh we we need to be informed so we can pray but we don't need to feed on it and i tell you if you just feed on that all day long it'll make you miserable and full of fear and god doesn't want us full of fear he doesn't want us there Come into the land of Goshen. Come into these places of refuge. Come into the secret place. Come into the covering. Hear it, uh, congregation Beit Rafa. You know, that's what God says, it's an online, con online congregation. So come in, and in this place, you'll experience shalom. In the world, you'll have tribulation, Yeshua said, but in me, you'll have peace, in me. So come in, and even Mr. Han uh, Han Hannity, is that his name? No, uh, yeah, uh, anyway, uh, yes, Mr. Hannity. Mr. Hannity says, even he quotes sometimes, uh, let not your heart be troubled. Well, he's a believer, hallelujah. Let not your heart be troubled. But you have to feed. We just have, to, that. I, I look forward to this because it feeds me. This isn't, this isn't work for me. Now, I, sometimes I have to press in because, you know, the enemy tries to resist me, usually for about an hour before. Y'all pray for me because there's some, there's some warfare and sometimes witchcraft and the signal was trying to act up again and, you know, and all this stuff. But you just press through and then God comes. Praise the Lord. All right. Well, listen, I've got to spend a little half hour kibitzing with you just talking i so for me you're just right here you're 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 in my office with me we're in your living room you know just just like we were meeting for for tea or meeting for lunch or something hallelujah so praise the lord hello dorothy wilhelm i'm gonna just read this one more uh, Shalom, Rabbi Maurice and Beit Rafa friends. Watched the healing service yesterday. Love the worship and your beautiful play. Well, thank you. Thank you. I hope you could hear all right. I Sometimes I, I, I listen to the playback. Sometimes I thought the, uh, the, uh, the organ, you know, when you get really loud. But that's the way it's always, it's okay. The, the synthesized, uh, but it's good though. It's, it's, they play real progressions. I mean, Pastor Jim's a good good player. I mean, Jim, I didn't realize he was as good a keyboard. Uh, very good. I mean, I remember him playing, but... And, of course, Bruce is just like like oil. I mean, he's just so smooth and never misses his arpeggios or anything. He's just... You know, it's it's, he was born to do that. I am certain of it. And it's a joy. It's a joy really was. I keep saying that, but it was. Well, listen, you know what I want to do? I want to, <coughs> since it's Shabbat, uh, Sabbath, or Shabbos, some, uh, depending on uh, Rabbi Shlomo, who was from Poland and uh, Eastern Europe, he would, they, in certain of the Orthodox, uh, 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 there's different sects, or they follow basically different rabbis, you know, the, the, with the payas and the hats and everything, you know, they it, the reason there's some of them have distinctions because they, they are un, they they are are have studied and been discipled by different rabbis. Many of them that went on, uh, you know, many years ago the, from the 1700s, a Hasidic movement, and uh, my 
my mother's side of the family uh, had a uh, had that I believe you know quite a bit in if you go back a hundred two hundred years in in Hungary and Lithuania so uh, it's a it's a heritage but it's also there's just there's something special about that world that I've carried in my heart for many years and it took the Lord to uncover it for me I I, I came into my heritage, my Jewish heritage, backwards. I, I grew up totally secular, uh, like any, you know, just American, no, no religion really, uh, except my dad was a devout humanist. And oh, and I'm gonna read today, uh, I wanna read another chapter in my testimony book as well. So we've got some things we gotta get into now, and I hope you enjoy that. So, and we're going to have a Shlomo story, of course. We can't, we, we can't, we can't, we can't have a Shabbat service without a Shlomo Karlbach story, at least until I'm done with this book. And we're, we're a good ways through. We've, we've, uh, wow, we're more than halfway. Look at that. This is a great book. I'm going to, and I like to, I like to tell it the way, kind of the way he does with the a Yiddish Russian a little bit of an accent, so, so anyway, so we'll get into all that now. Let's uh, <clears throat> let me just uh, read some of of Pastor Lenny's commentary, which is so so good. It's just I had to share it with you. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, praise God. Why did I space out again? I, I look at sometimes I look at the. The iPad screen, and I and I just all right. What am I looking for here? Oh, of course, yes. There it is. So this is from his life in the Word. Um, so the the parasha or the weekly passage this week is Matot or Masai, Masai, and it means tribes, and it means journeys. So it's from Numbers chapter 30, verse 2. Remember, we ended last week, uh, verse 1, chapter 30. And then and we go through 36. Now, this, is, this week <clears throat> is uh, rare because it's a, a double parasha. It, we actually, we go all the way through the 36. So if you want to read that, uh, every all the Jews and all the synagogues all over the world actually read this passage together and study it and and then and they just meditate it all week long. Hallelujah. So <clears throat> here's a couple of verses that are highlights from this uh, this passage of journeys and tribes. Okay. So all the different rabbis, they have commentaries and, and many of them go through the parasha and as time goes on, if God leads me to, I might, uh, I will going to also explore some of that more. And I'm also growing in my learning uh, in the Jewish world and learning how to live more uh, according to uh, those it's, uh, wonderful wonderful things that God tells us we get to do. <laughs> and and he asked me, he said, I want you to stay in the spirit in the new covenant, live the life of love. But he said, this, this, uh, this pleases me. He said, these are my ways. These are the way I told uh, Abraham's children to live, the best way to live. So I I have a conviction about that. It's not, you know, as soon as you start thinking that makes you, you know, some you know, brownie points or super duper and all that, then you get into problems. Just, I always say, and you know, always say, you can't get any higher than son or daughter of God and saved by grace, recreated, born again. So I talk a lot about the new covenant. <clears throat> but like I say, said many times, I said, uh, I believe the whole Bible, every bit of it. And uh, I also have, if you will, a holy responsibility to, to 
present some of these areas as well that will enrich, I think it will enrich your, all of our lives. Hallelujah. <clears throat> you can't obey God's word without it ble being blessed. God is in the blessing business. He likes to do that. And when you learn more about him and his ways and the, the Father, and, <coughs> and it will uh, expand you. In a, uh, and, and God's doing that. He's restoring the roots of our faith. He's restoring. Um, it, it's the time for the fullness to come forth. There's a glory of the old covenant. There's a greater glory of the new covenant. But it doesn't negate what has come it just adds to. So, <clears throat> it doesn't, excuse me, it, it doesn't negate what has come before. So, Numbers 30, verse 2, the very first verse in this week's uh, parasha passage is, it's written, And Moses spoke to the heads of the tribes of the children of Israel, saying, This is, is the thing which he has commanded. Masai. Hallelujah. These are the journeys. Here's another one. Numbers chapter 33 verse 1 reads, These are the journeys of the children of Israel by which they went forth out of the land of Egypt by their hosts under the hand of Moses <coughs> and Aaron. This week, the double portion of Matot Masai is read. Matot means tribes, and Masai, I hope I'm saying it correctly, M-A-S-E-I, or Masai, I don't know, means journeys. <clears throat> In the Torah portion of Matot, the tribes of Reuben and Gad approached Moses with a special request, remember, concerning land. These tribes were wealthy as they had a great amount of livestock. In those days, that was wealth. When they saw that the grazing potential in the lands east of the Jordan River, <coughs> ah, I had a little thing in my throat. Lord, get, take care of that. I don't have whatever COVID. As they had, anyway, these tribes were wealthy as they had a great amount of livestock. When they saw that the grazing potential in the lands east of the Jordan River would be perfect for their flocks, they wanted to settle there, outside of the promised land. They requested permission to stay there and not cross over to the other side of the Jordan with the rest of their brethren who were about to go in and conquer the land. <coughs> this week, hallelujah, that do, this is the double portion of this story. Moses was upset with their request, saying, Shall your brothers go to war and you sit here? <laughs> he chastised them for discouraging the rest of the tribes from entering the land of Israel, just like the ten spies. <coughs> After thinking about Moses' words, they told him, this is interesting, we will build sheepfolds here for our cattle and cities for our little ones. And they promised to join the rest of their brethren in the conquest of the land. Immediately, yet subtly, Moses corrected them, saying, Build your cities for your little ones and folds for your sheep and do that which hath receded out of your mouth. That's Numbers 32, verse 24. Notice <coughs> the tribes of Reuben and Gad mentioned their livestock first and then their families. But Moses mentions their families first and then their livestock. I hadn't, I hadn't noticed that before. Very interesting. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Pastor, for that. Finally, they understood what Moses was saying. Their response was, Thy servants <coughs> will do as my Lord commandeth. Our little ones, our wives, 
our flocks and all our cattle shall be there in the cities of Gilead. But thy servants will pass over every man that is armed for war before the Lord to battle, as my Lord saith. Numbers 32, 25 through 27. The tribes of Reuben and Gad, after finally understanding Moses' admonishment to them, were the ones who led the children of Israel into the promised land to possess it. <coughs> they told Moses, we will pass over armed before the Lord into the land of Canaan, and the possession of our inheritance shall remain with us beyond the Jordan. So they they complied, but you know it it kind of it never this story never sat right with me. It's like why are you you know you're looking out for yourself, your own tribe? What about the other eleven tri ten tribes? What about them? What you know? And so there's there's something I don't know. It just didn't. It's never sat right with me, you know. And yet it was a very fertile land, and it's to the north the north part of Israel, and to the west. So <clears throat> this is over, actually, I believe it's either just north of Jordan or it is the present land of Jordan. It might, you know, but it's beautiful. It's, it's, it's uh, uh, a lush area. See, the north of Israel, it's very interesting. Actually, the climate in, in Israel and California is very, very varied climates. There's all kinds of different uh, microclimates there, but to the north is more gets more rain and is more green. Like if you go up into the Galilee, you'll see it's uh, you know at times certain times of the year, uh, particularly spring and 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 the rainy the rainy season in in the in the winter as well. It, it gets very green and lush, and then there's the south part is uh, the Negev, but God's exploding it with produce. It's just gorgeous. Uh, I, I'm amazed in the last, even in the last 10, 15 years, as I, <clears throat> I believe my next trip back is, the divorce is, is probably my 49th trip. I think it is. It's either 49 or 50, so it's special. 49th tour to Israel. <laughs> been going since the end of 1991 and and uh so but anyway i i'm amazed at that it was there's of course there's still a lot of desert uh you know that just uh where the you know Qumran caves are and there's there's desert dead sea i mean it's there's nothing much growing except now because of irrigation we're, we're having more and more date palms and uh, it you know, just tremendous uh, productivity, which is just what God promised would happen when the Jews return, when Israel returns to the land after the diaspora, it would become extremely fruitful. And the desert shall blossom as the rose. And it is, I tell you. There are literally every kind of Every kind of fruit and vegetable and flowers and, and uh, you know, uh, just lush right in the middle of the desert because God showed him, God showed the whole world how to irrigate and grow things in the desert through Israel. They have, they invented the drip irrigation system a number of years ago and now they've improved it and they're improving it. <clears throat> and they were shown, uh, Israel was shown how to desalinate the ocean and make drinking water out of salt water. I mean, out and, and now that even out of thin air. I mean, they just get it right out of the, the condensation out of the air, and I, it, it's just amazing. This this these ideas, medical breakthroughs, scientific breakthroughs, technological breakthroughs. They lead the world in high tech. Uh, uh, and cyber uh, and security <clears throat> and extremely high level encryption uh, and because there's a war going on in the cyber realm to uh, as soon as they find a way to protect uh, the the uh, you know the private information then 
you know, it's almost like an arms race, except it's in the whole, you know, the cyber world's exploding and Israel's right on the cutting edge uh, as well. Industry, uh, they have some, they have some beautiful, and it's the so-called West Bank, or, you know, they, really that is the land of Judea and Samaria. That is exploding with industry, uh, all kinds of manufacturing now. So, but that's the good news. The bad news is Israel has been forced to give away more and more land, different cities. I mean, Hebron, uh, Jericho. That Jericho was the very first uh, city that was conquered by Israel. And it, we gave that, you know, the, in, the, in, in the 90s, you know, Bethlehem. I, when I first started coming to Israel, Bethlehem was so nice. It was, it was uh, you know, not only safe, but there was a, there was a, a holy hush, if you will. It was a, there was, when you went to the, I, 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 I was deeply touched at the nativity there. Now, it's still there, of course, but now I don't like going into Bethlehem because of all of the, uh, uh, all of the, the terrorism. But so there's all these little pockets of, you know, they just, they, they basically, it's like cheese, like, you know, cheese with holes in it. They've given, they've been taking more and more land and this piece so-called thing in the century or whatever the, the, that Jared Kushner has put together is not, uh, it, it, well, it, it can't happen if Israel will survive. I mean, it would totally destroy everything. Uh, but <clears throat> of course the Palestinians have the, and the, you know, the, the, the whole Arab mentality is, you know, the everlasting hatred that they'll never agree to any, anything. It's not, it's a, it's a, Eight six eight century tribal uh, mindset. They're back in the the seven hundreds. You know the 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 uh, as far as the idea of they don't think like Western civilized so called uh, modern twenty first century people do. They don't think that. Not I'm not, not everybody, but I'm talking about <clears throat> the Muslim. Uh, they're still, if you believe the Koran, it will make a hater and a murderer out of you. To kill the infidel, destroy, submit, go to war. I mean, actually, if you want to know true believers in, in the Koran, of course, I know right now I could feel it. In, wow, I could feel that in the spirit. The politically incorrect. Oh, you're not supposed to. I'm telling you, uh, what is the source of that hatred and murder? And the idea of dominating and take over and force conversions, that's happened for hundreds and hundreds of years. It's, it, it's, it is the very foundation of the Koran. It is what, it, it's not a God of love. This is, they're not, they're, there's no tolerance in that book. It, if you really believe it, it will make you into a terrorist. If you really believe the Koran, you will become uh, very much uh, like like everyone that's ever. It, again, if you don't know history, you're almost crippled in your understanding of what's going on, particularly in the Middle East. I don't have time to get into that, but I, I don't know. I got on a little little path there, but let's go back. So Moses said. <clears throat> He said, uh, okay, you can come, but you're going to have to, you, you, you can let your families stay, basically, there. But all the men have to go and uh, go into war. And so it was, it was, I would, I would, as if I was Moses, I would feel a little touchy about that. It's like, hmm, so I don't like that. That's, that's, uh, you know, it smacks of, of baser impulses, <laughs> not very, not, it's survival and, you know, the natural Jewish mind tends to be that way as well. You, you find uh, very quick to 
find the best situation possible and then seize upon it. <laughs> that's, uh, maybe that's a family trait or something, I don't know. But when you, when Yeshua will turn it around and put love in it and then it's okay. All right, so they agreed. The tribes of Reuben and Gad, <clears throat> after finally understanding Moses' admonition to them, were the ones who led the children of Israel they went first into the promised land to possess it. They told Moses, we will pass over armed before the Lord into the land of Canaan and, and the possession of our inheritance shall remain with us beyond the Jordan. So, <clears throat> possess the land. Over 3,000 years ago, the Hebrews stood on the east bank of the Jordan River. <clears throat> Their time in the desert nearing the end, the wandering for 40 years. Aaron had died, <clears throat> and Moses would soon follow. Adonai, that's what the Jews would call God in just normal, or you can also call, you can say uh, Jehovah or Jehovah or Yahweh is that's a, an anglicized version of the four Hebrew letters uh, that that uh, the holiest the holy name of God with a capital N. This is my name, <laughs> and the Orthodox don't even say it. They'll say this. They'll say Hashem. Hashem means the name or Sir or Lord, but. It's, it's just to respect, they won't, they won't actually even say the name. And I understand that, you know, of course we have the name of Yeshua now, that is the name of, of all names, the Messiah, of course. But God's name, this is, I am what I am. You know, he didn't stop being, he's still, he is. <laughs> but he is also uh, uh, the Holy One. So this great, great reverence and that's good we need to capture that in this end time church we have to start understanding how to humble ourselves before the holy one adonai the creator elohim yahweh wh wait yeah V, H. It, it, this is four consonants. I think I said it right. <clears throat> so, uh, and then the, actually it's the King James, uh, the King James translators, and I think Wycliffe and some other English, that they, they did an anglicized version. They just added some vowels. Jehovah is, but really that's, uh, that's, when you say that, that that's a covenant. That's a very precious, uh, precious. Uh, you, you know, you you worship him. He is the Holy One. <laughs> Blessed be He. You'll see that too in a lot of the even the prayers, but a lot of the Talmudic writings, a lot of the uh, a lot of the rabbis will write. Uh, they'll say Hashem or. Adonai, and then blessed be he. Blessed be his holy name, you see. So they sanctify the name. And that's a beautiful thing. I, I think uh, since we have such a coarse understanding in our generation of anything regarding uh, the knowledge of the holy, uh, I think we need to take a little time and maybe even emphasize it uh, and bring it into bold relief because we don't we 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 don't understand the difference between profane and holy very much anymore. What does it mean? It's not a religious thing as much as it is a heart. It's a heart reverence. That's what the the old English writers, uh, I mean, uh, translators, meant when they wrote uh, the fear of the Lord with a capital F. And 
the Lord. I always, when I write the Lord, I just use the word, I use Lord. And, but I capitalize all the letters and uh, as the King James does, but uh, version, but uh, the all that for me, Lord is immediately Hashem, the Lord, Yahweh, Yehovah, blessed be he. So when you see it, stop for a minute, just like the Jews do it. They, they sanctify his name. They, oh Lord, you know, we bow before, we bow before the Holy One of Israel. Blessed be he. So take a little time when you see that. That's why, one of the reasons why I like I like the, I'm not saying that in the modern translations are, you know, sometimes it's good to get a fresh uh, look at it. And I, I'm not against anything as much as I am for something. I, uh, but it was translated with a lot of reverence. Uh, the, there was a fear and trembling that we don't seem to understand that is good. And that's what happens when God manifests himself like he did yesterday. My God. Uh, you know, I, I, uh, Pastor Benny came over to, to sing. He, for some reason, he wanted to get right there. And I, of course, you know, immediately I let him come and uh, take, take any spot, whatever. You know, he felt uh, the glory or portal open. I felt this portal open, too, with, above the musicians. See, God inhabits his praises. <clears throat> Hallelujah! But uh, he walked behind me. I nearly, I nearly fell over. I, I, it was, and that used to happen to me a lot. I sometimes I couldn't even stand up. They had to hold me up. I remember uh, hold me up to play because the power was just these bodies. You know, you fall under the power. These physical bodies aren't. Uh, they can't handle the glory of God like the new ones will. Hallelujah! But wow. I felt the Holy, the Holy One. Blessed be He. You see, you have to, you have to get, ask God, ask God to put that kind of, 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 Oh Lord. See, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You want to know, you want to be in close fellowship with God. You have to, first of all, honor him. We have to learn, we have a, a very, we have almost no honor in our culture, very little honor. I mean, honor with a capital H. But God is very honorable and he is worthy of extreme honor and his people and those who he has set in places, you have to honor them. And uh, that's not worship, but it's honor. And there's a, you know, somehow God put it in uh, early America. He put a deep, deep honor covenant in the military. They understand authority. They understand honor. And I tell you, you get so far with God, if you understand, it's also a military operation in a way. It's a, and, and you honor rank. You always, I mean, you know, that's why sometimes I will call people, you know, I, I'll tell you why I do that. I even, even now we're, you know, they're kind of loosey-goosey out here in California, you know, and this is, and then we're brothers and, you know, but I, I'm very, I'm keenly aware of whom I'm with, you know, very always. If someone's a pastor, I honor that. Now, I'm not doing it, uh, you know, or a, an apostle or, and, uh, you know, I don't know, I didn't know what to call uh, Rick, Rick Taylor because he's just, he's, he's just a real humble guy and he doesn't want, he doesn't have a title. So, I know what to call. So I said, all right, I call you Rabbi Rick. Why do I do that? Because I honor the place he holds in my life. And I tell you what, you want to see God pour favor out on you, so honor. Honor those, especially those that God has sent into your life. 
to feed you and uh, to protect you and, and uh, you know. So, <clears throat> and you never lose out by doing that. Now, I'm not saying to go to an extreme and have, you know, 10 titles in front of your name and, and be in, you know, it's not, this is not an ego pride thing. It's just the opposite. And that's okay to do. That's uh, uh, because, let me tell you something. When you do that, then you draw from the gift. God's able to bless you because you honor the gift that God has set these people over you or in a place of, and then hallelujah. One of the reasons I, I, I learned this from Pastor Benny, I did. I, I, how he honored the mothers and fathers in the faith, especially the great men and women. And I began to understand. I began to see, wow, that's, that's the way the kingdom of God works. In heaven, <clears throat> they don't worship people, but you'll see the angels. And sometimes when they greet you, and the times I've seen in visions and things, they, there's a, there's a, a bowing. They'll, they'll actually, because they recognize, they recognize and they honor great men and women. When we begin to look for that, look for that in unexpected places, you'll be amazed. A lot of people that we think on earth aren't anything are actually very greatly honored and worthy of being honored. And uh, God likes to hide, you know. He, and it's okay, you know, I don't, I don't make it in a big deal, but <clears throat> especially if I, you know, and I, I put my antenna up. That's another good thing to do. And when you, you're listening, you know, God, God set ministry gifts in the body, you're listening, put your antenna, especially if you're in a service, put, I call it putting my antenna up, I think. Uh, Kenneth Hagen, I think, used to say that. But put my antenna up in the sense that, okay, God, I'm listening for you. What are you going to say to me through, through this, this precious gift? You start loving and honoring. Oh my, God, God, God likes that. He likes it and he'll bless you. He'll bless you. Hallelujah. He wants to lift you up. He, he's, God's in the exalting business, not in the demoting business. <laughs> he's trying to lift everybody up, not pull them down. It's the devil is trying to pull us down all the time. Uh, but you, anyway, somebody need to hear that. Let me go on here. Dear Lord, help me. <clears throat> I'm going to read this. Okay. Oh, that... That came right out of Jehovah, he wrote. <laughs> I hit the whole thing about that, honoring the name. Jehovah spoke to the people and gave them specific instructions regarding the land they were soon to possess. First, he gave them specific borders for the land. <clears throat> then he told them that each tribe would possess a specific area in the land. <clears throat> gave instructions for the Levites for, and for cities of refuge and gave the command to possess the land. What it, is it that is so special about this land? And then he makes some comments about the redwoods and country where he is and how beautiful it is compared with uh, <clears throat> some bleaker places. And he says, well, you know, this area wasn't actually, especially then, it wasn't, uh, it was desert. It's not any, look, uh, Mark Twain took a trip to what they, they called it Palestine, you know, the, the, the actual promised land there in the 1800s. And he wrote a whole book about it. <clears throat> and he said, he wrote and said, I've never seen such a God forsaken land and all my, who would want this? It's barren and, 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 you know, and up in the north there were swamps and the, you know, and malaria that the, the first that settled, the, the first Jews came back and, and they had to clear the land of rocks. This is the hardest, it's not the easiest land. It's, it's, and God said it would happen. He said the land will lie desolate and it will be under, actually there was a curse, if you will. And that curse was only lifted the curse of the law 
It says if you if you uh, the land will belt you out or it'll vomit you out, and then you'll wander the nations, and then I will bring you back. And that's when Israel came to life. And uh, it didn't happen suddenly, but it was a, it was just a desolate wasteland for hundreds of years. And it, it was hard just to live, just to survive. And uh, it took great sacrifice to settle the land and especially to make it into fertile uh, 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 agricultural land. Uh, because uh, I mean, it it was, uh, but the God put anyway. So, so it's it's not as spectacular. He says the red woods of Humboldt County or Northern California, in or, and then he goes. But what about Moab in the West Utah desert, uh, or the Arches National Park? It is mostly desert. But now he's talking about this the land. But of Israel, he says, but <laughs> it is his desert. It's God's land, and God gave it to Abraham. It's Abraham's. <clears throat> there is a spiritual beauty to the land of Israel that cannot be described. This is God's land. Remember the, the beautiful words to the song Exodus? This is my land. God called Pat Boone that woke him up uh, early morning and gave him the words. It was just a melody for that movie. And uh, this is my land. God gave it to me, you know. And the, uh, the beautiful story of the founding of Israel, that movie. And it was origin actually, it's based, that movie X is based on a book, a novel, historical novel by Leon Uris called Exodus, and that's a great book. You ought to read it. It's amazing. It's long, but it's fast reading. It's great. <clears throat> okay, so there's a spiritual beauty to this land. Uh, God, yes, he owns everything and everywhere, all the earth at all times, but in Israel, and, and I've seen this many times when people visit for the first time, they're never the same. Uh, there, it, it's, but in Israel, there is a special presence. In Numbers chapter 35, verse 34, it, he states that he lives there in the land. God does. This is God's neighborhood. This will one day be the capital of his kingdom. Hallelujah. In this week's Life in the Word, the Hebrews are told to possess this land where Jehovah states he lives. But not once since the time of the original commandment have they been able to do so. Why? Numbers 33 verses 50 through 55 gives instructions for how they are to possess the land. They are to drive out everyone in the land who serves anyone or anything that does not submit to the one true God the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. This was the message then. This is the message today. God hadn't changed his mind, but we still haven't seen the fullness of the promised land uh, come, uh, come into the hands of God's people. It's only a fraction of it at this time. And they're trying to, they're trying to, to put holes in it like cheese, the nations. And that's very dangerous because God says, don't divide the land or you will receive judgment. Now that judgment isn't the new covenant. That's the old covenant judgment. Same, if those who bless me, I will bless. Sorry, bless Abraham, I will. Those that bless your descendants, I will bless. There, that's better. Those that curse your descendants, I will curse. And we've seen that here in America when we have turned against Israel, usually, uh, well, uh, almost a hundred different judgments within 24 hours of different events that happened. This was chronicled a few years ago in a book. Uh, it's still, you know, there's more by, uh, called As America Has Done to Israel, So Shall It Be Done from Habakkuk by uh, the prophecy, uh, oh, I can't think of his name now. Anyway, 
So, uh, <coughs> I should remember, my mind just went blank. Oh, if it comes back, I'll, I'll tell you. <laughs> I know what it is, I just can't think of his name right this second. Okay, but this land is desert. It's not, you know, it's, it's not uh, redwood forests and mountains or the Swiss Alps or something. No, it's very barren. But there's a spiritual beauty. So, Numbers 33, 50 through 35, 55, gives instructions for how. They are, they are to drive everyone out of the land. Yes, I just said that. Most of us have watched the news over the past years concerning Israel. <clears throat> the land is not being possessed, but is being given away piece by piece. Jericho, here I just said that. Jericho, Bethlehem, Hebron or Hebron, and the list goes on and on. A biblical land, even the heartland, Judea and Samaria, being given over to the enemies of God while the Palestinians mock with murders and terrorism, while godless leaders of governments conspire against God and his people. <clears throat> what is the answer? It is past time for God's people to take a stand, whether you live in Israel or not. It is time to do what you can do. If you live in Israel, possess it or get out of the way of the people who are obeying God and settling and possessing it. <laughs> Don't, do not be concerned about the consequences. Psalm 81 is a clear promise to you. God will defeat your enemies before your face. Now, understand something. I'm not being political here. I know it is political. And then some people uh, immediately, you know, that they're, they're, it's almost like a... a, a a reflex action because you've been taught uh, via the the news media for so many years and you've been taught wrong historically and uh, there's a lot of things that but I don't have time to go into but we have a, oh, a knee-jerk reaction when I wrote uh, see because why because you've been brainwashed to think that way but you need to think historically you need to think biblically Biblically, God is, the Bible is the title deed to the land. <laughs> There's, I mean, it's in, it's in our eternal book. So I'm just telling you what the Bible says. And that's, that's actually, that's actually the correct way to interpret scripture. Literally, God means what he says. For those of us not in Israel, what can we do? First of all, if at all possible, plan to go to Israel when this present situation uh, allows. In other words, let's, you know, I, I'm, I go at least once a year. I go usually a couple times a year. Now, I, God has uh, supernaturally connected me uh, about 12, 13 years ago with with Governor Mike Huckabee uh, through Pat and Shirley Boone. They brought us over and ever since. And so whenever he goes, he, he brings me and, and, and uh, what an ambassador. They both were, I mean, both are, you know, of course. Uh, but uh, he doesn't always come now, but he did in the first few years and Pat and Shirley's gone, Shirley's gone on to be with the Lord now. But uh, anyway, uh, but Mike, I, and never gets old. Oh, what a time we have. I'll have to, uh, we were scheduled to, to go on a trip in September. I'm not sure, I, I, we might have to cancel that. Things have kind of backed up a little bit. Uh, and certainly here in California, dear Lord, get that man out of office. But uh, this governor is crazy. Sorry, Mushuga. <laughs> He's crazy. All right, so, Plan to go to Israel as soon as we can. Support, support that. God will bless that. Stand arm in arm with the people of faith and allow your presence to strengthen their resolve. They're in Israel and stand up for Israel. Uh, uh, Pastor John Hagee has a, gr a very powerful group uh, and he's boldly taken a stand and 
some people some years ago had a theological problem. In fact, I, I felt bad because I wasn't, uh, you know, he, he, he loves my playing and he wants me to, you know, he's personally a beautiful man of God and very honoring. And, but, but because of his call to Christian Zionism, uh, the Israeli government and the Orthodox Jews don't want anybody that's a Messianic Jew on the platform. They don't mind if you're a Christian, they don't mind if you're a Jew. But if you are uh, right in the middle, like me, uh, they get nervous. Well, actually there's great evangelism and great, great harvest coming in among Israel. And if you wanna know of a ministry that is tremendous for evangelism in Israel is uh, is called One for Israel. It's a one O N E for Israel. That's a powerful. Uh, they're they're doing things and teaching and and uh, there's two kinds. Yes, I see. I'm going to be talking about this today. So we will. That's the good thing about being able to go on every day. I can just flow. And God wants me to take more time. I will. So I, that's what we're doing. Um, what was I going to say? There's two ways, actually, that we can support Israel. There's two different branches to the, uh, the, the church's role in the end times regarding national Israel. What is it? Well, first is, of course, the gospel is to go to be preached to the Jew first and also the nations, also the Greek, or also the that time. When he says Jew and Greek, he's talking at that time, the Hellenistic world was the world. It was, it was the Greek, uh, you know, they, all the, of, of the, the Greek and Roman world uh, was uh, really the dominant uh, Gentile force. And at that time, interp that influenced everything. So. When Paul says that in the first chapter of Romans, he's referring to the Gentile nations. Well, <clears throat> uh, the Gentile nations need to understand that this biblical restoration, there's, what can we do? Well, we can pray, of course. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem and uh, pray for the success of the nation of Israel. Pray for Aliyah, or the regathering of the Jews back to the land and all the tribes, the Israel, all of the tribes. We don't know where they all are, but they're coming back. We're coming to back to Israel. I mean, we came to America. We're coming to America. Remember that song, you know? They're coming to America. Well, we're going home to Israel. We are. And uh, that's happening before our eyes, in our generation, in our lifetime. The baby boomers saw the greatest, saw it the greatest. I mean, this is a special, special generation after World War II, uh, because uh, God began this uh, return to the land physically, and spiritual rebirth. We pray for it, so we we pray. Uh, so one, but what? There's two kinds of Jewish ministry, I should say, from the church. One is uh actual evangel evangelism the the bringing the good news of the gospel in the way in an in an honoring way an honoring way understanding the wrong way the church has done it for 2000 years and the great damage uh, that was done between us because we uh because of replacement theology you have to learn how you have to learn how to present Messiah to our people in such a way, and part of its language, part of its, uh, part of it. Now there's so many secular Jews; it's it's an easier task than it was right after, you know, in in the in in the Cold War time, and then in the, you know, because we came out of the Holocaust, the worst tragedy, and uh, and. You know, one of the reasons, I am certain of it, one of the reasons my father resisted for so long was because of the terrible Christian anti-Semitism. See, for a Jew, they don't understand that they're just Christians in name. They just think, well, these 
sophisticated German Christians are supposed to be, they know, you know, they're representing Jesus and they, they, they put us into uh, freight trains and gassed us to death and shot us and we were subhuman, we were rats, we were despised. Well, that, that didn't happen just one time. That's happened hundreds of times in nearly every nation we've been in, in different forms. That was just the, that was just the cherry on top. That was the worst. That was, I know, more than, I mean, it was the whole, it was worse than <coughs> any other because, and I talked about that uh, some months ago. So we need to stand against anti-Semitism and the church, and we have to support what God is doing uh, for natural Israel. <coughs> we had to bring the gospel, of course. The second way Christians minister, in the right way we have to bring the gospel to, to Israel and the Jews, is uh, something that is now called Christian Zionism. And uh, I think that's, a, that's an accurate name. The, the belief in the physical restoration and, and really that's believing in the Bible. The, if you believe the Bible, you'll also believe in the physical restoration of the land. And if you don't, you have been taught wrong. You, are, you, are, you have ignored hundreds and hundreds of scriptures that promise, in fact, the, the whole end of Isaiah Isaiah 40 through 66 is full of these end time promises that we're witnessing right now. And so uh, Christian Zionism is a movement that uh, helps, uh, helps the Jews in any way practically we can uh, to return to the land and to support them. That is, uh, that's, that's like uh, uh, that's like uh, blessing Jesus' personal family, you know, if you will. <laughs> that's so yeah. Uh, that God and, and and you know financially uh, supporting whatever we can and standing against. Listen, we have to stand against Marxism here in America, which hate, hates, of course. Whenever there's any kind of division, racism, and hatred, guess who, guess who gets, gets uh, at the top of the heap? The Jews, always. Just a matter of time. And uh, because somehow we're to blame for it. Well, but the truth is, the truth is, that's satanic because Satan has a special hatred for the family that brought forth his demise, the Messiah, <laughs> and how, see, so he's, he's got a big goal in the end time, destroy Israel before the kingdom can come, before Jesus can return, and he's coming there, he's restoring there, it's going to be there that the greatest last battle takes place, it's there that the showdown happens. Uh, Armageddon, where is it? It's in. It will take place in the Valley of Jezreel or Hamon Gog, the Valley of Megiddo, and it's a big plain there. Uh, it, it's uh, green and it's 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 agricultural right now, but it's uh, it's going to be the scene of the greatest battle. All the nations, every single nation of the the wicked, will be presented. I mean, uh, will be represented. Resisting Jesus and the end of the tribulation to uh, try to stop him. Of course, that's satanic. So, you know, the hot spot isn't Toledo, Ohio, or wherever, or, you know, Los Angeles. Dear Lord, we drove through Los Angeles. We drove through Los Angeles last night. I just wanted to get out. I can get us out of here. Get out of this city now. I didn't. I we didn't stop. You know, just the just the the the, the you have to drive through 
you know, North Hollywood and all that area, and you can just feel it. Ugh. But there's a whole different... In fact, it took us, last night, it took us to about 10 o'clock until finally we got to the Central Coast and forgot exactly where the point was. I could feel that principality, his influence, way far north, even past Thousand Oaks, all the way up, you know, Calabasas and past all these even the fancy areas and, you know, north, we keep going, going, going. Finally, finally I felt the break. And even then, you know, California's got... But you you have to get get up into the hills and finally... I was like, oh, so glad to get... I haven't been in... I haven't... I, that was, I just felt it spiritually. Yeah, I can literally... I, I And same thing with San Francisco. Uh, one time we were driving my daughter... Rebecca went to school up there in Oakland area and we tried everything to get her to, she had a full ride at UC Davis, full ride, this scholars, you know, thing. And, and Oh, I didn't, Rebecca, you need to go. Oh, her boyfriend was at San Francisco State. She wanted to go to Berkeley. I said, oh, please, no. Well, well, we prayed for her anyway. So we would go up, we were living then down in, uh, 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 in the high desert is what we could afford at that time. And I was doing a lot of missions work uh, in Asia at that, you know, this is some years ago now, almost 10. So anyway, uh, we would go up, we would go up, you know, to see her so often, ever, every, ever so often and visit. And uh, I was, we were driving through, we were driving through the main, one of the main highways there in in just outside of the uh, San Francisco. The, I mean, it was in the it was in the city actually. So all of a sudden, I saw something, and I don't like to think about it because I it was like I opened up in the spirit, and I looked down. I looked down. It was like I couldn't see the car or the ground or anything. I looked down and I saw. Uh, and I heard something, because you could feel, you know, and and people that were chained together, they were in hell. It looked like a barbecue pit, and they were they were burning, and their flesh was consuming, and they were chained together, screaming, and they had literally fallen. They had died in that city and fallen, perversion. They had fallen into hell, and it was like an open barbecue pit and they were just oh it's awful and they were screaming and tormenting and saying don't don't serve don't serve perversion don't ser don't go the way we've gone and I realized it was the last 50 years or so and uh the terrible and and it was it was a spirit of death it was what's going on right now is serious now I I understand that was a vision and you know, it's still beautiful, scenically, scenically, uh, San Francisco. I tried to, I wanted to go to school in San Francisco after Curtis. I, I, I had a friend of mine who's in the New York Philharmonic now, and he, he was a violist, and then he played violin, and he, he wanted me to, he was telling me about his teacher who taught at San Francisco Conservatory, and I actually came out to San Francisco in the, right after Christmas, 1982, and we were there for New Year's, and my friend Robert Reinhardt was, oh, what a great, uh, he had a string quartet and I just admired him, you know, he was an amazing guy and a uh, uh, great musician. And so I thought, wow, you know, he's, and he's telling me about how cool San Francisco is, early 80s, you know, and he told me how amazing, you know, uh, you go for walks in the Golden Gate Park and you, know, you find yourself and we're living in Philadelphia in this and terrible winters and freezing cold and and I mean so it sounded like San Francisco was the magical city what well, it is it's beautiful but but such decadence such wickedness and uh, so God help us here in California anyway so how did I get on that 
how to get me, how did I get over into that, Brother Hagen used to say. You know, so. Well, it's, it's good, it's good anyway. <laughs> so, all right. Stand arm in arm with the people of faith and allow your presence to strengthen their resolve concerning Zion. Zion is Israel, Zionism. To stand, stand boldly. Because you're standing against the same devil that's that is is trying to bring the antichrist system and the tribulation the same thing. I mean, it's it's a, it's the it's just it's a part of God's plan. If it's in the Bible, I believe it. We stand for it. Amen. If you're a part of a congregation, go to the leadership and make a stand. I like that, Lenny. Very good. Tell them you desire to stand with Israel and ask how. You can start a prayer meeting and awareness campaign in your congregation or your your uh, church if you're, you attend a church. Of course, that's really been up up uh, ended last few months. But we do. We need to pray. Keep praying because it's it's very serious. We're surrounded on all sides. The people of God, both the church and Israel, are important. Yeah, and we're at war. If they refuse, if the church, listen to this, he's such a lover of, of Israel, I love it. If they refuse to start something to pray for Israel, leave and find a congregation who will support Israel. If you want to make it in these last days, even spiritually, if you want to, if you want to be under the manifest presence, you want to be a part of the bride, I guarantee you the bride loves Israel. Because if you if you believe the Bible, you'll and God puts the same love in you that He did for uh, you know that I and it does, I'm not talking me now. I'm talking about I'm just talking. I'm not talking. You know, oh, this is about you know Rabbi Maurice. No, it's about it's about God's covenant covenants, and it's about. Messiah's love. It's about God's love. So ask God to put that in you if you don't have it, because as if you don't, you're gonna you could you could easily uh, get a what what is it when you when you uh, get on the shore? You know, you get out of the you get out of the river. You know, and you get. Um, when you're forced on the land and you can't go anymore, you know, on the ship. So stay in the river of God because that is, Israel is the apple of God's eye. He is looking. I mean, he's, and you feel, I can literally, when I land, when I land in Jerusalem and Tel Aviv, sorry, in Tel Aviv, uh, and when we stay a lot in Jerusalem, but when we, when we land, I mean, everybody claps because uh, it's it, when I first did, I was weeping. I mean, I, I just it. This is home. I mean, God's eye is right there. So that's why if you want to poke God in the eye, then uh, mess with Israel. And uh, I guarantee you, you will have a response from the, from the Lord. And it won't be a good response. So I suggest uh, be careful about that. Didn't know I was going to get into all that. I was just going to read this and it's become the whole, almost the whole night. It's all right. If you and I say we desire to pursue his will and his word, we must stand with God and with his land. We must not back down from his word. The land has always been and forever will be his. It is the fa father's, his. It is his neighborhood and will soon, it's his neighborhood and will soon be the capital of his kingdom. He is coming soon and very soon. Let the cry of your heart be that of Maranatha, come quickly. Lord Yeshua, Jesus. Anti-Semitism is going to wax worse and worse. We all need to step up and pray for the shalom peace of Jerusalem. Now, before 
Jacob's trouble. That's the tribulation before Jacob's trouble kicks in. And we're, we're on the borders of it now. Please don't stop praying if you're around because all Hades is coming to dinner. All hell. You know, maybe right now you don't see. Well, it doesn't seem like that in America. But let me tell you what's down, coming down the pike very soon. It's a word that starts with the letter P. Persecution. Uh, when the church starts getting persecuted, guess who else always will get persecuted? I'm talking about the revival, revival Christianity, those that are the, the real, the bride. I mean, I'm talking about where the power is, where, where revelation is, where, uh, where God is, is really, uh, really moving. In the the church, we are going to start seeing liberty taken from us, and if we do not rise up and pray right now here in America, but at the same time, guess what? God's going to shake. He says, "I'm shaking the nations to do what? Bring the Jews home, and He'll do whatever He has to." He he overturned, God overturned the whole Soviet Union and turned it, the whole thing collapsed and turned upside down because just out of uh, uh, Jeremiah chapter 16, I'm going to send, I will send uh, fishers and hunters and I will bring my people out of the land of the north. And many came. That was the largest aliyah of Jews in the 20th century. But there's been more. There's uh, uh, there there's still a lot more, and what's going to happen? It's going to get bad. It is, yeah. You bet. We're going to find out whether you really have a covenant with God or not, because it's not going to be all, you know, peachy sweet, float down the on roses rose petals down the river of life. Uh, in America, no, it's, it's already, things are heating up and it's not going away. That doesn't mean we won't have victory and miracles and revival and I'm all for that. And I want to get as far into uh, wherever the fire is and get in the center of it and be a part of the, the glory and all that. But this is not going to come easy. These days are uh, also, uh, we will be fought for every ground, everything in the spirit, and Israel fights in the natural. See uh, that we see it, we are we are joined at the hip, the, if you will, the the church and Israel. And uh, you, every time you see a breakthrough in Israel, you'll see an outpouring in the church. You'll see a spiritual. Every time time you see a. a a retreat or an attack spiritually it, uh, the church will also and we we've we're in these times uh dear ones we are uh, you have to accept that that doesn't mean that doesn't mean that we we let go of our faith or or we 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 think that uh you know and it, it does mean don't yield to fear you know god has not called us to go up into the mountains, store food, and, uh, uh, you know, wait for the end. No, that's, that, God doesn't want us to be afraid. Fear not. Don't let your heart be open. The word is going out in power. Hallelujah. So, all right. On a final note, what can we do? We can stand with those who today are there, our Jewish brothers and sisters. Well, both the Jews that have not seen Messiah yet and those that do. There are many Messianic believers. There's many Jewish believers, like never before in the earth, and not never. Uh, we're, we're coming into harvest spiritually. So, But think of, think of Israel as your covenant family, because it is. It's a, the other side of the family. So even if they're pre-believers right now, they're on their way. But anyway, you should treat everybody that way anyway. 
just love. Yeah. But honor the place God's given to natural Israel. Our Jewish brothers and sisters there today, we can stand against anyone who desires to usurp the inheritance of Abraham's children, vice Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob's uh, children, uh, by saying the land does not belong to the Jews, that the Jews are not really Jews, or that the Palestinians are the true Jews. No. Now I I have compassion on them. The gospel. They I mean I have compassion. They were they were uh, pawns. A terrible story. We don't have time to go into. You know, and God loves them, and I believe in reaching them and everybody. You love everybody. But honor the Word of God. This is not a time to sit on the sidelines quietly. Take action. Yes. How? With a vow to do whatever he asks, to stand with the place he also calls home. Hallelujah. Well, Shabbat Shalom. Just have a, well, of course, we're ending now many places. The sun's already gone down and it's the end of Shabbat. This is the, they call Havdalas. I, of course, yesterday I couldn't, uh, I couldn't minister except I did. I mean, I, I was, I mean, many of you got, got to watch it. And if you haven't, it's, it's good. I, it, I mean, I, I always think, oh, it can't get any better than that, you know, and then it gets better. God always outdoes himself. But this was, whew, for me, it was a high water mark. I mean, I, I was, just the purity of it and the intimacy, a tremendous service. So I highly recommend you, if you can, take some time, at least watch a portion of it. And he taught, he taught well, we received communion, we, I mean, it was just a grand slam home run, I'm just all the way around. <clears throat> so anyway, uh, what I want to do now is I want to receive, I want to come the covenant meal and come to the Lord's, the table of the Lord. We're going to receive Holy Communion and <clears throat> hallelujah. Uh, probably don't have time for much more this evening, but I hope you're blessed tonight. <clears throat> But, uh, you know, there's nothing like receiving communion daily. There's nothing like it. I'm in a whole different... I'm not the same person. I'm a completely different person in the sense that more and more of Yeshua has taken over my life. And I literally join. When I receive the... When I, when I drink the blood, I, the blood of Jesus, hallelujah. I believe it is. It's a place I release my faith and point of contact, but I believe it is. I join with him. And that resurrection life flows into me. I tell you, I've, I, it's a place of tremendous victory. And let's, uh, <clears throat> let's uh, thank God for this uh, Shabbos. That's how, uh, oh dear, I didn't read my story. Well, I might have to stay on. Y'all can go. We're going to receive communion. And then for those of you that... <coughs> I can tell I've been with Pastor Benny. He, did, he, he, you know, cause he doesn't know how to do a short service. It's just not in his, his spiritual DNA. It's not in it. This just doesn't happen. But you can stay on with it. Because we're going to end with a shlomo. So I, well, I'm going to still let you go if you have to. Because I, I try to at least keep it to two hours. But we're going to do that. And I got... I got into Lenny's uh, commentary there and started preaching. So let's just receive the the elements of communion right now. So if you have it, would you get it ready? And I'm going to turn my music back on. I didn't even realize it stopped. <laughs> so. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, havmotzi lechem min haaretz. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, 
Bore Fri Hagafen. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who creates the fruit of the vine. Hallelujah. Yeshua, on the night he was betrayed, took the matzah and he broke it. And he said, take this and eat it. This is my body, which was broken for you, that you may be healed that you may be made whole. Shalom also means nothing missing and nothing broken, mended. And he was broken so we could be mended. He mends, he heals our broken hearts. He binds up our wounds. Hallelujah, I feel the anointing right now, the anointing of the Ruach HaKodesh, the precious Holy Spirit. Oh, how Pastor Benny talked about his best friend and mine, how I love him, how I love him. Oh, there he is, God's just healing. There, He's just healing people right now. My goodness, thank you, Lord. Why, because when God shows up, he comes with his shalom. He'll fix you wherever you're broken right now. Receive. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Someone has a, yeah. Someone has a, a an ear infection. I think that's, or the ache. It's a terrible ear. If you ever had an earache, you don't want it. But somebody's listening and you're just, God's just healing you right now. You just, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And yes, yeah, someone that has, uh, you you have been attacked yearly with sinus uh, infections and allergic. Yes, it's called rhin, rhinitis, rhin, allergic rhinitis and sinusitis. Be healed of all the itises concerning your, I mean, your, 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 uh, the drip be healed right now. I know what that is. I've experienced that. I used to live in Tulsa, dear Lord, every spring. Well, be healed of that right now. Praise the Lord. God gave me a word of knowledge for that. Someone, yes, someone, when you stand up, older sister, when you stand up, the room starts spinning around, the vertigo, especially in the blood, when you stand up after you've been sitting, and, and sometimes you've even passed out. And God is, is doing something for your circulation and for your inner uh, balance, balance, vertigo, be healed of that right now. The eye, also infections in the eyes, eye problems, be healed. Hallelujah. There's another dose for you in your back, Jody. And be be healed of dental problems. Be healed of, uh, yeah, Yeshua is the best dentist I know too. So <laughs> I know a good Jewish dentist and doctor. <laughs> it fix you all up. <laughs> His name is Yeshua. Yeah, be healed of someone else, of your balance, of dizziness. Someone's been afraid of falling. Uh, I see you and, but that fear really gripped you because you fell and hurt yourself, bang, you, you broke yourself all up a while ago. And I understand because uh, mom, uh, Dvorah's mom lives with us, I call her mom, but our mother, my mother in love, that's what I call her, uh, she, uh, uh, she fell and now she, you know, a while back, but you know, God is just going to help you. So you, he's able to keep you from falling. There's a scripture for you. Hallelujah. Psalm 91. No, he said, no, that's uh, actually several places. It's, uh, you shall not dash your foot against a stone, but also he's able to keep you from falling. That's in Jude and present you faultless. Hallelujah. Faultless. Lord, thank you. Someone else, uh, you have a, a, a leg that, or a, it's either a knee or ankle that gives out on you. It's like, 
and and like that and god is is strengthening that joint right now hallelujah someone with loss of feeling you can't close and open your hand and you've had some arthritic problems in your joints there's some some uh, of the older older uh ones that god is touching right now he's just and someone, yes, another one that has brittle, dry bones. You know, that's a bad combination to have. Brittle, by, dry bones and falling spells. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want that. But God is, is he's doing something for your hips. And you're, he's moistening your bones right now. Be healed in your bones. Yes, he's marrow to your bones. As I said, marrow, someone's being healed in their blood right now as well. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Just receive what you need from the Lord. I don't need to call it stomach. Yeah, ulcer. Be healed there. Uh, be healed of the prostate enlargement. Be healed of the, uh, uh, yes, and someone has an iron deficiency also as well in your blood. Iron. Uh, but... It doesn't seem you've been taking supplements. It doesn't, it's not just iron. It's some other things that the, and God is going to, yeah. And he says it's going to improve. Next six weeks is going to be a great improvement. God is releasing nutritional, he just said nutritional wisdom. <laughs> you know, that's important. I'm learning a few things and I feel a whole lot better because I, 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 you know, we, we, we can't eat everything we want like we did when we were 25 and 30. You can't do that anymore. Of course, I'm still really young, but I'm only 57. That's young. Dear Lord, I'm, I'm not even halfway yet. But nevertheless, your body gets your attention, doesn't it? But the Lord is, is going to help you. Yes, and someone's been interceding for my health. Thank you. No, but for, for my physical health, I'm starting to exercise. It's like God's giving me grace. Keep going. Keep doing it. It's helping me. And I'm even starting to eat better. And Devorah, too. She went swimming today. I did my 10-minute workout. There's this uh, Tony Horton's 10-minute something. Or, you know, and it's hard. Gosh. But I, because I, they closed the gym up on us. We, we were going, and I was going I was doing that, and so I said, I'm going to keep going. And so I have, I have this uh, beach, beach site body, beach body. Anyway, so I'm uh, doing that, you know. Um, I just got to, I don't want to look like a fat Jewish violinist anymore. <laughs> so I'm doing the best I can. So y'all keep praying for me. Oh, I'm so, forgive me, Lord. I, I, Lord. Hallelujah. I love you. This is, Yeshua said, took the cup, the cup of redemption, the cup of Messiah at the Passover meal, and he said, this is now my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness, the remission of sin, your sin. Drink it, and out of my death shall come resurrection life. And this is the cup of life now. This is the cup of, of eternal life, if you will. It's not the Holy Grail. That's not that kind. It's, but it is the Holy Grail. <laughs> it is. I tell you, this is the meal that heals. It's the meal that joins us with our Lord. Come into union with him now. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory to God. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm waiting for someone. Someone forgot. That's why. Well, you're getting it right now. <laughs> I'll wait for you. You forgot the cup. That's all right. You know what? But you know what? Even if you don't have the literal Next time, prepare, because I, I try to do this every day, and nearly every day I've done it, so, because it's so precious to me. I've grown to love this communion. Oh, we took, I, I couldn't take it yesterday with Pastor Benny, because I'm playing, but 
I did in my heart. I sure did in my heart. Mm -hmm. Oh, hello, there you are. Let's let's drink together. I'll drink to that. <laughs> and you know the Jews, we say something. If you ever seen Fiddler on the Roof, we say to life, to life, lechaim. Lechaim means to life. So I drink to your. I drink. Let the life, the resurrection, Zoe life of God fill you now. Receive the blood of Christ. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Mm. Oh, that's sweet. Oh, right, right song too. Good. Praise the Lord. Well, I just have to do it. It's Shabbos, so I am going to read you a, sh a Shlomo story, okay? This is my wife's rabbi for many years. He's a Shlomo Karlbach for 10 years. She used to take care of him, and he was a very, I learned later, he's a very special man. The, the, in the uh, Orthodox Jewish world, they call uh, him a, a tzaddik, which means... Uh, kind of a combination of being anointed and uh, uh, great wisdom and, uh, you know, uh, in the, uh, a rabbi or scholar that has uh, an, an enlightened type of uh, ministry. And they were very, very special. He was one of these, called the singing rabbi, his music. One day I'm going to play some for you, just of him singing. Oh, it's just so beautiful. One of the first things Devorah did when I met her was we were on the West Side Pier, you know, on Saturday. On Saturday. It was after a crusade. We were at Madison Square Garden with Pastor Benny. And then right after that, this was in 2003, I think, in the summer, about this time. That's right. And we, and she she had one of the very first, Devorah had one of the very first um, uh, MP3 players. And she had, and, and so she said, listen to this. And she stuck it in my ear. And it was Rabbi Shlomo singing. And he said, I see I need, I return again, return. I did, I did, I did. And I hit, I mean, I hit my knees. It was, oh. I said, who is this man? It was like I went right into the, the Holy of Holies in the Father's heart. I, and, well, it's because all he did was sing psalms all day long and worship God. And, and he, was a, he was a tzaddik, a very special man. So he had these stories of tales from the old country. And, and this gives you a very good... Uh, 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 kind of a snapshot into the the old world of Russia and Eastern Europe before the war, before before even the 20th century. So this story, and I'll end tonight with this. Thank you for being patient with me. I hope you stay on. And if you have to go, I understand it is 8, eight o'clock here. Of course, it's later some places or middle of night. I, I got people watching all from all over the world. It's amazing. I just marvel at that, I, that you could do, you know, it's, it's like uh, something, you know, Dick Tracy's watch or something, all that coming out of this phone. Oh my. All right. Anyway, this story, he used to tell stories. He said, uh, he says, um, you know, Hashem, he's the Holy One, blessed be he, he said. He's the greatest storyteller in the universe. The Bible's Torah's stories. He tells stories. He tells stories. He's the greatest storyteller. <laughs> so this one is called The Wind. The Wind. All right. I'm going to turn this down a little bit because I don't want it to be distracting. So I just have it really quiet. Okay. So this is your Shabbos blessing. All right? Glory to God as the sun sets here. Thank you, Lord. 
Everybody knows that the holy Rat Kitzer was the right-hand man of the seer of Lublin. The holy Rav Kitzer was very tall, which was helpful when he was ushering people into meetings with the holy Lubliner because <clears throat> he could stretch his arm across the door frame, forcing the visitor to pass underneath. <clears throat> if the person was really humble, the Rav Kitzer would keep his hand high so the visitor could enter freely without any problem. But if the guest was known to be arrogant, the Rav Kitzer would lower his arm so the visitor would have to stoop in order to pass. As for those who, mamash, had great delusions about themselves, <laughs> the Rav Kitzer would put his hand on their heads and push them down. So they were practically crawling on their knees as they came before the Holy Seer of Lublin. The Holy Seer of Lublin in turn did honor to the spiritual stature of the Rav Kitzer by calling him Heliga Rav Kitzer. <clears throat> Even though that means holy. <laughs> Even though he was only his assistant, his right hand man. Holy Rav Kitzer is how he always referred to him, except one Shabbos afternoon when he called him Rok, Rok Chik. And this is the story. That Friday night, <clears throat> one of the 36 hidden holy people came to the seer of Lublin. That's the Zadiks, they, they think, anyway, it's a... Uh, 36 hidden Zadiks came to the seer of Lublin and said, My wife had a baby, and tonight is the Shalom Zachor to celebrate his birth. But there is no minion where I live. Minion is 10 Jews that can hold a service. <coughs> the seer of Lublin called out, Heliga Rav Kitzer, gather together a minion to go to the home of this little Jew. The Rav Kitzer, understanding immediately what the Yidala was Lamed Vavnik, was a Lamed Vavnik, chose the eight best pupils of the seer of Lublin. He went himself with the Lamed Vavnik to make the tenth man for the minyan. <clears throat> the group walked to the outskirts of the city, halfway to the home of the Yidala, they were crossing a large field when a terrible storm rose without warning. The wind was so powerful and it threw dust into their eyes, making it impossible to move or to see. <clears throat> Most of the group wanted to give up, but the holy Rav Kitzer wouldn't let them. Instead, he yelled at the storm, Wind! What kind of chutzpah is this? We're going to the home of a holy hidden Jew for Shalom Zakor, and you're in our way. Take off! <laughs> and the wind ceased. The next morning, the city was struck by a terrible pestilence that affected the animals. There was an epidemic. The horses and cows were dying. The livelihood of the entire city was affected. Everyone was worried. No one could think of anything else. When the Rav Kitzer came into the synagogue, the seer of Loveland wouldn't acknowledge him. Whenever the Rav Kitzer looked at him, the holy seer of Loveland would turn his head away. Or, if he needed something from his right-hand man, the seer of Loveland would say in a very abrupt way, Hey, Ravchik, bring me the wine. This went on all morning. Ravchik, Ravchik, in front of everyone. The holy Ravkitzer started feeling smaller than small, but he didn't know what he had done wrong. He had taken the men to the Shalom Zakor, just as his teacher had asked. <clears throat> The evening had been beautiful. They had returned in time for prayers in the morning. By late afternoon, 